two, one. Hello, everyone. Sorry. Bye, Stephen. <laughs> Hello, everyone, except Stephen. <laughs> anyway, anyway. So, our questions today are you an exotic goddess or do you feel like a half breed human? Are your differences celebrated or do you feel ridiculed by racism? Those are some strong words, everyone. Welcome back to Social Intercourse. Today, we're going to talk about what it's really like to live life as a mixed race person or someone straddling two different cultures here in America. I'm Ranji, your half Indian co-host for today's show. And here with me, I have the usual suspects. We've got Rachel, who is Korean American. Hi, Rach. We Hello. have <laughs> our other co-host, Vicky, who is half German and half Polish. And we have a really special guest that we're excited to welcome today. Her name is Stacy, and Stacy is half Mexican. Hey, ladies. Hi, guys. Hello. Good morning. Are, Hi. Good morning. Are we the I start doing the intro, first of all. I, I love it. <laughs> Thanks. It's my first intro. I wrote it out last <laughs> well night. Well done. Well done. Yeah. So Good I job. Have to say thank you. Um, <laughs> You know, it's funny because I'm, I'm looking at all of us on this screen. Are we the mm. face of America's melting pot or what? I mean, this is what America looks like right now. I hope yeah. so. This is America now. Yep. Pretty much. Pretty much. We are just a mix of everything. Um, I love it. I love looking at my screen right now. <laughs> Goddesses. So, really. my crown. I do have that question. Like, you posed to us in the beginning. Were you celebrated for your differences, you guys? You and Stacy being mixed race, or did you feel so, like a I grew up in Colorado, which is not actually the Midwest, but it's very Midwest in how things function, I guess. And the only way that I can describe the place that I grew up is very white. Like everybody is white. So for example, I am very white passing, right? If you were to look at me on the street, you wouldn't necessarily know that I was Mexican. My father is white and I got very light skin. My sister is much darker than me. Um, and so I grew up in a very, very white neighborhood. And my mother, who is Mexican, um, was taught to assimilate, right? because my grandparents had faced so much racism and so much bigotry. And so she wasn't proud. She, I wouldn't say she wasn't proud. She wasn't taught to be proud. So I just thought I was white, right? I think until I was 18, I just thought I was white because I'm white passing and everyone around me was white and people would use racial slurs. I did not use racial slurs, but people would, right? About Mexicans, Blacks, Asians, um, and, I didn't think twice about it. I mean, people would use Mexican slurs around me and I didn't think twice about it because that wasn't me. You know what I mean? Um, and at 18 years old, I moved to New York City, talk about a melting pot. And suddenly, right, I was, because when I tell you I was the minority at my school, like I was the minority at my school. I think there were a few other black kids. It was like just white as far as the eye could see, right? So then I moved to New York City where there were actually people of color and people with culture and people of interest. And all of a sudden things changed for me and I became much more interested in my culture. I became much more interested in my heritage. I became much prouder to be who I always was, but it's not even a door that I felt was open to me. So that's kind of how I, I don't know if that answers your question. But. No, that's, that's, I just, it makes me think about your sister. You said she's much darker. So I wonder if she had the same experience or ideas growing up as you did. So she had a very different experience. We both grew up in a little town. It's not little, but it's a, a suburb of Denver called Arvada. And she is considerably darker than me. Um, I mean, if you were to look at us side by side, you, you probably know that we were sisters, but she's 
I mean, the skin tone is night and day, right? And she was, she has memories of um, being teased for her skin color. She has memories of when she was a teenager being followed around the mall. Now, whether that was because she was a teenager or because of her skin color, but, you know, um, people thought maybe she was shoplifting. Um, she's had her intelligence. She's an extremely intelligent woman. She's had her intelligence questioned many times. You know, is she cheating? Because she's dark. So how could she be this smart? This is like, this is a true wow. story. My sister's wow. brilliant. She's a brilliant, brilliant woman. These are things that I have never, I'm, I can't speak to those things. I have not faced those, right? And when people speak to me, they speak to me as if I were a white person. You know, when I was in New York, people thought I was either Jewish mm -hmm. or white. Um, I had a ton of lovely Jewish mothers who tried to set me up with their sons and I'd have to break their hearts and tell them I wasn't Jewish. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but yeah, my sister had a very, very different experience. We both grew up in Arvada and it was very different. And my sister also left when she was 18. She moved to Florida, which is not known to be diverse. Um, but she went to a very, very diverse specialized college um, and really learned for the first time, I think the same thing as I did, right? Who she was and that she could fit in and that it was okay to just be who she was and be in her own skin and really learn to cherish that, I think. Um, so, I mean, I can't speak for her, but I would hope that, that that's what she would say if she were right. to answer that I'm question. so glad, I'm so glad, Stacey, that you and your sister got to have experiences where you could become proud of mm -hmm. your heritage because think of the people that mm -hmm. don't ever get there. And they just live their whole lives feeling less. How about you, Angie? Yeah, how about so, you? So it's funny. Um, one thing Stacy said that tri I, I think I'm a little bit um, ethically, ethically ambig, ethic, not ethically ambiguous. I am not ethically <laughs> ambiguous. <laughs> I, don't, I, I question that. Ethically. I don't know. You're not I, am really ethically, solid. <laughs> I am ethically Another solid. Show. <laughs> ethically solid but ethnically <laughs> ambiguous yes and um when i was when rachel and i lived in los angeles and we were doing some on-camera work and there were auditions they would send me out for anything that wasn't white i could and people and people here in kentucky they they kind of look at me and they're like well she ain't quite white <laughs> <laughs> yeah she's something there's something in there but we can't tell what some people think it's Spanish or Mexican or Italian or, you know, I kind of, I kind of get the gamut, but, um, you know, growing up, I also grew up in a really homogenous, um, area. There were blacks and there were whites and there mm -hmm. was practically nothing in between. And so I went to a Catholic school for 12 years. And I will tell you that out of the entire school, there, the, the whole claim to fame or the whole claim to um, diversity, right, was me, half Indian. And there was one other guy named Shante who was half black and half white. And that guy was the whitest, like, black guy you've He reminds me of um, Carlton on the Fresh Prince of Bel Air. Just, <laughs> yes. And that was it. Me and Shante, that's all our high school had for <clears throat> diversity. <throat> and I remember walking to school, even religious, religious diversity wasn't um, a thing there. You know, I remember walking to school and there was this one church on the side of, of the sidewalk and it was like Episcopalian or something. And we were just like, what is that? We would cross the street. We didn't even want to walk by the Episcopalian church. <laughs> so that's how I grew wow. up. Wow. It's yeah. interesting to me because... If you didn't have your name, would people have known right away, like, right. oh, mm -hmm. she's not quite white? Because if you just looked at you, I would have right. thought, oh, like a little oh, something. Yeah. A oh, girl with, some, with some nice. color yeah, to her. Nice. With a tan. Yeah. <laughs> a little flavor. So, yeah. So. Yeah. My name is a whole, a whole thing. So growing up, obviously, I was the only Ranji far and wide. And I. I'm so used to it being mispronounced. I, I don't even pay attention anymore. Um, I'm more surprised if people get the pronunciation correct. 
Um, but I've learned mm -hmm. to answer to anything that rhymes, anything that starts with an R. I remember in school, whenever, <laughs> oh. whenever a new te I know, whenever a new teacher would, um, you know, the first day of school and the new teacher would, you know, read the roster and everybody, I, I would know it was me because she, there'd be this pause and mm -hmm. then they'd kind of hold hold the paper away. Like that would give them some better perspective on how to pronounce it. I would just go <laughs> ahead and be like, present. <laughs> <laughs> that's me <laughs> yeah I know. <laughs> yeah i oh. wonder if you had had a name like jenny or susan or stacy mm. you know something except you know i'm stacy right my grandma's aurelia but i'm stacy so it's like again oh, say it again say that name again <laughs> <laughs> too bad dave's not here he'd love it it's aurelia um oh, yeah. yeah yeah she was the actual best so um yeah you know I mean very even my my mother Patricia is is kind of a, a it's pretty common in Mexican names yeah. um so you know but it's like Stacy like I'm just another white girl you know on well, Randy's um, thing is it <laughs> sorry yeah on what you were saying Randy you know there were there were three that I remember black people at my high school they were triplets it was Obi AK and Emmy and either AK or Emmy are they're like TV stars now I like see them occasionally and they're always like on the airwaves um and they were the sweetest kindest most lovely people but what you were saying Angie, it was like them and me right and I'm sure there were other people but I didn't know of them you know right well what I was are we having was technical difficulties <laughs> I feel like I everyone's know, frozen you know? Not no, on my end. Know. It's just me. Sorry. Yeah. Sorry, yeah. Just, here's shocker. <laughs> it, it's not us. It's you, Rachel. Here's my surprise face. Like, what is Daisy saying? Okay. All right. Sorry. I was, I was oh, trying boy. to pay, pay attention to your story, and I was like, I don't know what's going on. <laughs> Sorry, Randy. So, oh, I was just going to say, uh, uh, my, my name is actually a man's name. So in India... Ranjit can be a male or female name, but the the last name, the second name should be Kaur, K-A-U-R, if it's a female, and it's Singh if it's a man. And so where I was born in India, and my mother is American, white as white can be, very, very fair skin, um, she knew that we would all be coming back to America to live. And so she went ahead and gave me my father's last name, because that's how we do it in America. And she was like, it's it's going to be fine. We're not going to be living in India. Well, every Indian that I meet is so confused. <laughs> when you, they hear Ranjit Singh and I show up, they're like. <laughs> Did she have a sex change? Or... Show, right? <laughs> <laughs> I live with that. <laughs> yeah. No, when you told me that your name was the male's name, I was like, oh, is it really? It, it sounds so female to me because I know you as Ranji. So, so mm -hmm. I was actually, you'll, you guys will find this funny. It was actually named after Ranjit Singh was a Maharaja, the first Maharaja of the Sikh empire. Um, and the name means victorious and which is all wonderful. I mean, he was actually really, so a my really name. good ruler. What your name? Is, oh, this is it so my, so is my name. Victoria. <laughs> Victoria. <laughs> anyway, sorry. Go ahead. No, no. It's we're perfect. twins. We're twins. Twinsies. Um, so, but this guy, he, he was a really amazing ruler and the kingdom was really prosperous under his rule, but he was known for being exceptionally ugly. He had pockmarks all over his face and one eye and they named me after him. Oh, well, well, yeah. you just knew that looks weren't everything and look what they got. Right. It's gorgeous. <laughs> so there you go. Right. You made up for it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm so fascinated now, by how... You guys went to school and there wasn't that like diversity because I grew up with such a diverse school. I can't imagine going to school with like zero diversity. <laughs> I don't know. Right? Or Vicky, you said your school was wait not diverse, right? Yours either. Well, I, I I had two sort of experiences with that because when I was younger, I lived in a really small town, and. Um, there was one, my, one person who was a minority and everybody else was white. Um, but there was no one, there was no one like really white. Like there was no one even like with my Polish last name, like I stuck out. 
um, <laughs> has all the Joneses and the Smiths and stuff like that. And then there's, you know, me. And then um, I moved to a larger town, larger city, and it was all Hispanic. So I kind of had the opposite of Stacy, where mm, did Randy right. just disappear? <laughs> or is she that just, did. Is she still I don't okay. know where she went. I'm like, she doesn't want to hear my story, to... I guess. Uh, anyway, so. I want to hear it, Vicky. Uh, I want to hear it. <laughs> thank you, thank you. It was kind of the same thing, though, but like the opposite, where I was the only white girl and everybody was Hispanic. And so I used to get teased. It's kind of like with your sister. I used to get teased for being so white and they used to call me Casper and neon, neon legs because, you know, Ready my legs that. were glow in the dark and <laughs> yeah, all that kind of stuff. And then I would get like, I get all the Polish jokes, like, you know, how can you be smart? How can you be in the honor roll when you're Polish? Because they're all stupid. And have you heard this Polak joke about the Polak and the, you know, helicopter with ejector seats and blah, blah, blah. And I was like, <sighs> so yeah. Which, by the way, <laughs> that was last a previous show you had said, Polak and Randy said, "Are we allowed to say that?" Somebody else who's married to a Polish man or with Polish descent, they said, "Yes, you can say that as a Polish person." <laughs> yeah, I, I had never heard that that was a thing, and I, I don't think I could say for me. That. I think you could say. I don't, I don't know if we can, I can go around saying that, but you're Polish. <laughs> you have Polish descent. I don't know why? You. Well, <laughs> yeah, I mean, maybe, I don't know. I. I tend not to get offended by that because I mean, there's so much more for me to get offended about that's like way worse, <laughs> like that other stuff. But yeah, um, so but I, I wore my I have my Polish flag today. I wore my Polish oh! flag shirt. Oh, nice! I didn't even know that was the Polish flag. That's cool. And I can't even I can't even I can't even say this stuff. But this is from the Polish national anthem. This part, um, okay. but it says the same thing. It's like as long as you know. As long as we live, Poland will not perish, which kind of is about in the Polish national anthem, you know, we got invaded all the time by everyone. Right. And half the time we didn't have our own country. So it was basically a song about how you can keep your culture alive, even if you don't have your own specific country. And actually, Speaking there's of a Polish general in that song named Dombrowski, which is my name. And he was a famous <laughs> hero and he's in the Polish national anthem. So all these heroes. <laughs> well yeah. done. Um, keeping the pop culture alive. So Stacey, when you went to New York at mm -hmm. 18 and you got more into being proud for your heritage, and mm -hmm. like, how did mm -hmm. you start? Like, what was the first thing you got into? Like, did you not grow up eating Mexican food or? So uh, my grandparents were first generation, right? Mm -hmm. um, so my grandma cooked this like amazing Mexican food, but I never cared for it. I had quesadillas, right? I was a kid, I don't know, you know? Um, and, and, you know, when I when I think back on it, when I hi Randy, hey guys, I don't know if you can hear me. We can, yes, we can hear you. I can't hear anything. Oh no! no. Oh no! <laughs> just sit there and nod. Well, just smile and nod. She's going to tell us about her. Daisy's going to tell us about her. Looking back, my 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 grandma actually, you know, the way that she the way that she decorated, the way that she designed, it was very it had a very Mexican influence, right? It was there was mm. a lot of things from Mexico. My grandma and grandpa spoke Mexican to each other. Spoke Mexican. Spoke Spanish to each other. Um, uh -huh. And but and they didn't teach their kids. Right. Because of yeah. the bigotry that they had faced, they wanted their yep. kids yep. assimilated white, even though they had these yep. brown, brown, brown babies. Right. Um, they wanted them to be as white as possible so that they yep. didn't experience Same. that. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah. so, you know, and later and, and my mom can like understand Spanish, but like my dad who grew up a few years on, the, on Ibiza, he speaks better Spanish than my mom does. And he's white as they come, you know what I mean? Anyways, so when I moved to New York, um, I, you know, the, the first thing I noticed was that I was in class with, um, with people who were speaking Spanish that were black. And I was like, what's going on here, right? What's going on? And that obviously shows how narrow my, mm -hmm. I mean, my, I had no experience, you know what I mean? Like I under, I understand how that sounds, don't get me wrong. Um, and so I discovered Puerto Rican people, right? Mm -hmm. And this like mm. beautiful culture that I never even knew existed. And then I had a Cuban friend and then I had a Haitian friend and I was like, oh my God, like I didn't even know. And these people were so proud of where they came from, you know? And they grew mm. up in like 
these little apartments in the Bronx and they were so proud and they tell you all day about where they were from and who they were and like nobody was going to disrespect them. And I was, that's what blew me away, right? Is meeting people, uh, meeting people of color with such pride in who they were. Because to be quite honest, I had always known white people to be proud, Mm -hmm. right? And I had always heard, I mean, I can't tell you the number of times I heard the the term beaner, right? Which is very offensive. I never even thought of it because I wasn't that, I was white. You know what I mean? Like that wasn't me, I was white. And it didn't, it just never, it was such a, a, a huge contrast for me to move to New York and suddenly have these people who were proud of who they were. I had a good friend of, of mine who moved from um, Cape Town, Africa, and so proud of her culture and so proud of where she came from. And she she was like she was like this very, very special spirit. Right. Like she was just full of this life force and this energy. And so to really come across that was the first time in my life that I had had that experience. My sister is seven years older than me. So she had had that experience going away to school and she she had kind of f- found that culture and she had really connected with my grandparents, um, excuse me, my, my mother's parents, my, my dad's parents died when, when we were a little younger um, and just reconnecting with that Mexican heritage, you know, but when I was 18, uh, I was in New York when I was 18 to 21 and that was kind of my first experience with that and I was never the same, you know, I think for the better obviously. Um, but I was just never the same. When I went back to uh, white Colorado, I went through quite a bit of culture shock, right? Um, and I really missed the culture and I really missed, you know, people of every aspect of life surrounding me. Because I think you can glean so much from that, right? I think there's so much to be said for looking outside yourself and like what what can I take from this person? You know, when, when I had my first baby, um, Rachel brought me over a special Korean soup that's supposed, to, that's supposed to help you with, your, with your postpartum. And I just remember mm. it touched me so deeply because I just thought like, that's something that's really important to her. That's something that's really important to her culture and her doing that for me, you know, I mean, she's like a sister, right? So her reaching out to me in that way, <clears throat> it's such a, such a difficult time, such a beautiful time, but such a difficult time. Um, it was so incredible. So I think to like, to take the cultures around you and really be able to meld them, what a gift. I know, and we're lucky mm-hmm. to be in a country where there are so many different cultures mm-hmm. that we can yes adopt our friends' cultures and really be part of it and welcomed into mm-hmm. their culture. And, yes. You know, Brandy, can you hear us now? I can hear you a little bit. We'll, okay. we'll see. But, you know, Re- there's, there's, something, <laughs> there's, there's something that Randy had told me a long time ago that like really, um, I loved hearing this story from her and it's really about her mom. Her mom was just so interesting to me, but you weren't even born in the U.S. Right? Or me? <laughs> yeah, you. <laughs> it's just so, the, the audio is, I'm having some audio issues. Angie Singh was not born in the U.S. <laughs> Can you hear me? Test it. Test I'm going to jump off and try to jump on one more time, okay? Okay. okay. <laughs> <Yeah>. Next story. <laughs> oh, wait, Joe, you talk about, about right? your experience, huh? Sorry? Where did you grow up? I grew up in Arizona, Here, so. Oh, okay. Yeah. Were you always, Rachel, you're all Arizona. When I was talking about up, like yeah. the mixing of cultures, because Vicky, um, she loves the Korean culture and she wants to go live in Korea. She lived there for three months last winter. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. yeah, and I love Well, it's interesting she, because, like, yeah. To my mom. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh, ma. <laughs> oh, ma. My mom. Oh, ma. <laughs> yeah. um, and I love that. I love when my friends do that. Yeah, I kind of, you know, it's it's interesting because we were talking about how, um, you know, we live in this country where we can kind of, we're exposed to these different cultures, right? Which is something they really aren't in South Korea. Only through the media, really. Um, and Rachel knows. And so when I was younger, I wasn't proud of being Polish. I didn't like mm-hmm. it. I wanted to change my last name. I hated my name. 
I hated all that crap. I told my mom when I was 18, I was going to change my name. <laughs> and I was going to change it. To, well, I told her I can't wait to get married because I was going to get a new name. I was all excited. Mm -hmm. And she's like, well, sorry, kid, because I had this huge German last name and I married this Polak guy. And like, I traded a crappy last name for a crappy last name. <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, okay, where's Mr. Jones? And then anyway, so I'm like, I'm just gonna do it myself. I'm just gonna change it to Smith. Um, she's like, well, you're gonna really hurt your dad's feelings. I'm like, I don't care. Your dad, my dad saddled me with this name so he can, you know. He can um, deal. But, right, he can deal. But once I got to college and I started to be exposed to more people, um, then I got really into being Polish. And then I mm -hmm. found... <laughs> This one celebrity was Polish that I was following. And I was like, oh, there's a cool Polak. Like, I was so excited. And so yeah. <laughs> he was cool. So it's then cool. I started to like, <laughs> and like trying, you know, I went to Poland and I, you know, trying to read up on all the traditions and everything. And um, I got to meet where my family was from and I got really into that. So I kind of checked that box. And then I got really into, like, I was always into Japanese culture and anime and all that kind of stuff. And so then... I kind of segued into learning about Asian cultures and then I got really into Korean culture and then I wanted to go to Korea and then I went to Korea and it was like, again, flip where nobody looks like me there. <laughs> and so, you know, you're kind of, you know, trying to assimilate, but you're always seen as a foreigner. You, even if I married a Korean guy and had a Korean baby, I would always be a foreigner till the day yeah. I died. But it's interesting. So it's, you know, how long were well, you that's how Go ahead, go ahead. What, what rate? How long were you in Korea? She was there for three months. Because so, that's months, the second that's time longest month, the visa month, will allow. The time. Yeah, the first time I was there for a month. She wished she could stay longer. Months. But the visa, yeah. they don't give a longer visa. So she had to come back. She yeah. screaming. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, no, it's, it's interesting because, you know, I'm always going to be looked at as a foreigner. Because I can't help how I look. But I'm American. Mm -hmm. You know, and right, right. My experience growing up is so different because it was always instilled into me: be proud of being Korean. Mm -hmm. There's no way you're going to grow up not speaking Korean. There's no way you're going to grow up not eating Korean food. I love There's, that. You know, I yeah, love me that. too. I yeah. wish I, I wish I'd had that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I hated it because I wanted to spend my Sundays playing with my friends instead of going to Korean school. Mm -hmm. I was, my yeah. siblings and I were sent to the Korean school and we're like, oh, yeah. I know I did learn Korean. We already know Korean. We speak it at home. <laughs> like, it was, yeah, and that was the rule. When we're home, right. we are not allowed to speak English. We had to speak Korean. Oh, okay. so, yeah. Also, because my, my grandma lived with us, my grandma helped raise mm -hmm. us. She doesn't understand English at all. So they're saying it's disrespectful to be speaking English mm -hmm. when your grandmother lives in the home. So you must be interesting. Great. So it was a different. Um, so when Vicky told me her dad refused to teach her Polish, mm. yeah, like, my dad didn't speak English. He didn't speak English till he went to parochial school, and didn't know any. They didn't have ESL, and like I told Rachel, like the nuns, you know, beat him with a ruler until he spoke English till he got it, and so. It was never like a proud, proud thing for him. And he's like, I speak a little Polish. Like, I don't want to teach you that anyway. It's not proper. And he was kind of ashamed of it. And he's like, you're an American. You'll speak English. And that's it. That's how my grandparents were too, right? First generation. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. their kids were not speaking Spanish. And mm -hmm. their kids were going to get straight A's. And their kids were going to, I mean, like I, you know, their kids were going to wear clean clothes, nice clothes. Because my, both of my grandparents grew up dirt poor. Right. So mm -hmm. they were, they had all these stories. Like my grandfather had 12 siblings and they would take yep. one bath, you know, like, so like they'd have this yep. dirty water yep. and, and my, and my, so my grandma and grandpa were huge. Like they, they would sometimes bathe their kids twice a day. Cause they were not going to have dirty kids. Mm -hmm. They were not going to have kids mm -hmm. who weren't dressed appropriately. You know, I mean, my, my grandfather was really the American dream, right? First generation, um, fought in World War II in order to afford college, went to college, got his master's, um, wow. became, became a principal and a superintendent. Um, he, he was really, really, um, 
acclimated in his career. Mm -hmm. And, you know, he did all these things. And, you know, as he got older, he would say, I wish we had, you know, to my mom, I wish we had taught you Spanish. I wish we had taught Mm -hmm. you more about, you know what I mean? And it became so important to him and my grandma. Um, And um, it became so important to him and my grandma and, and therefore became important to us grandkids, right? Like it it Mm -hmm. was right to them and as they got older and they reminisced they thought you know oh this is what we should have done so anyways sorry i digress yeah yeah no 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 that's that's exactly exactly because we're here yeah for sure being so stacy being mixed race and getting back into um your heritage and being proud of um both sides of your family Mm. you have children now Mm -hmm. so I, I will. I guess you're going to raise them differently because your kids aren't just mixed with uh, your Mexican part because their dad is also mixed. So they've so got a whole. <laughs> my kids are just pure mutts. Um, I um, <laughs> love it. My mom. Is that a kid is be a pure mutt? <laughs> yeah. Sanji, Sanji, can you hear us yet, Randy? I, I'm. I'm back. Yes, I'm back. Yay! <laughs> Yay! My mom is Mexican and Apache Native American. My dad is German and Irish. My Mm. husband, his mother is Vietnamese. Um, His dad met his mom during the Vietnam War. And his dad is Choctaw Native American. So my kids are like the melting pot, right? Now, my eldest is whiter than me. She's got big blue eyes. She's got light brown hair, right? People look at her and they're like, and I say, yeah, she's the milkman's. We don't know. Like, right? Like my dad is like this white German Irish guy and he's got big blue eyes and she looks like my dad. And then my younger has dark skin, dark eyes, dark hair, right? It's just so interesting. It's so interesting. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. And you know, it, it it's, it's cool to know that they have such diverseness. You know, my, my husband doesn't speak Vietnamese. I think his, his mother was similar to my grandparents and that she wanted her kids to be as American as they could be. Mm -hmm. So people ask me, oh, does he speak Vietnamese? And I say, no, you know, unfortunately, but, but I think he understands a lot. Um, Like I think, you Mm -hmm. know, we want to take to Vietnam at some point. Um, and, and I think he would understand a lot of it. Um, and we're getting our kids actually registered now with the Native American b- b- database because I don't know that okay. I have, yeah, I don't know that I have enough Apache to register them, but they're like one quarter Choctaw from my husband because he's one half. Um, so, you know, scholarships, stuff like that, like hopefully it'll save us a dollar or two. <laughs> <laughs> but it's cool, I mean, of course. You know, people people ask me like, "Oh, what you know? What are your kids?" And I, well, yeah, I didn't kids. even know that part about uh, your husband. I thought really? he was just half Vietnamese. Yeah. So, but I knew I was like, you know, he's he's where's that white in him? I don't really see that much white in him. So, <laughs> makes sense now. No white. He is not. He is, and interestingly enough, Mix, which is our last name, is an English name, traditionally an English name. So there must have been some type Somewhere. of you know, yeah. when, when the English came over and conquered and whatever. Right. There was either a name was changed and, and they, they don't go that far back. But I mean, his dad is registered with Choctaw. And I think I don't know, but I think between 80 and 90 percent Choctaw or something like that. Wow. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, Randy, cool. now that you're back. That's rare. What did let's, I miss? Let's go back. Did I, Randy, I miss? Everything. <laughs> everything. Watch the show. Like we gotta go. Randy, watch, watch, watch the show, okay? <laughs> watch watch the episode. Back. I want to. I want to go back to Randy's story because I find it so interesting how this white white American woman goes to India <laughs> as a baby. <laughs> like, yeah. How yeah. did your parents? Yes. Do I, I wish. I wish we had the. Pick. I wish we had the picture. StreamYard wouldn't can't, won't let us put it up. So it's just not the right format. So you guys go to our IG. We'll have the pictures up for everyone. Mm. So you can see it over how it. bald I. You can see how bald I was as a baby. I didn't grow hair until I was like two years old. <laughs> anyway, so yeah, my my mom and dad met. Um, oh God, is that what? for me? <laughs> 
What is that? It's like, it's like, did you hear Randy it, Rachel? Has no clue. I hear it. Randy has no clue. <laughs> what? Every time you speak. <laughs> Releasing it, releasing it. <laughs> so earlier, they told me this was happening to my mic. Every time you speak, <laughs> it made the burping. What? It's like a burping man sound. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Every I'm really time you speak. 14 years old, I'm sure. Okay, okay, okay. It's not so funny, you, it's not funny, it's not I funny. Speak, it goes, <laughs> And I was just like, what? Relatable. <laughs> Dog dying? What's going on? No, I don't know if this will relay back in the recording if the audience hears this too. Oh, if not, they just think the three of us are crazy and on something. Oh, Is it still doing it? Yes. What do That's we do? okay. We'll, we'll just listen to your story with us. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, no I know. It's fine. It's fine. I really no, no. Go ahead. Tell it. It's tell just, it. Just we got to hear it. It's okay. We're used to him now. <laughs> okay. We lost her again. Hey, Ranch, oh, it's okay. You were fine. Just fine. tell the story. <laughs> well, there we go. Okay. So if I can wrap up Randy's story, I know can she was born story, in a hut. <laughs> yeah. I don't remember all of it, but I know she was born in this tiny Indian village. With all the like the aunties and all the women, and um, they did take her to a hospital. Mm. I think because her her mom was almost gonna die having her or something. Am I mixing two people's stories oh, together? See, this is why I need Ranch here. <laughs> 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 <It's> real, <laughs> but yeah, she was in this little town. I just remember from what she told me, like you know, they took her back, and she was in this like little village and it was like truly really like mm -hmm. a village was helping to raise her and she was a colicky baby and um I why guess her mom they, go there her mom was like um she, like, well or her dad her, no i think or she, her, they her dad was they here her? yeah mm. he came as like a college student or something and so oh. she met him and found him fascinating and ran off to india with him <laughs> and i think that was the story I'm not quite sure. I'm just making up stories here. <laughs> I'm making up stories for Vanjie. Well, they're very sweet. They're very sweet. Yeah. yeah. Well, how but, about you, um, Rachel? Because you weren't you weren't born here either. No, I was born in Korea, but I came here at like eight months old. So, um, my dad was in the military, so he was sent to the U.S. military, and I actually have like amazing pictures of him in Kentucky on the military base. And I grew up on a military base out here too. So we went back and forth. Yeah. Yeah. Um, military. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Uh, Fort Lewis <laughs> in Tacoma, Washington. Hey, That's where I've been there. Um, yeah. But yeah, um, we went, he went back and forth from Korea and the U S so I have memories, somewhat memories of going to preschool in Korea, oh. I think. Mm -hmm. um, but again, we were on the military base in Korea, mm -hmm. um, so we were su surrounded by like multi-diversity, multi-culture. Cool. Um, anyway, my mm -hmm. um, yeah, my like little preschool bestie was like a half black, half Korean girl, and mm -hmm. my sister was put in a um, school that was a international school, so they only spoke English. Mm -hmm. So it was, yeah. So I was born there. But came here at eight months old, and I had to. Again, we had to know Korean. We had to be proud of who we were. And mm -hmm. it's interesting when I, I was younger. That. Good on your mom and dad. Good on them. Tell them. I yeah. mean, I mean, God bless them. Every Korean American that I know that I grew up with was in that Korean school, <laughs> or you had to know Korean, mm -hmm. or um, all my Asian friends that I know now. They yeah, Chinese. They all went to whatever school on the weekends to learn yeah their language usually it was at a so, church somewhere or something like that and yeah, yeah. I, have, I have two little cousins who are half chinese and they both go to chinese immersion school they have okay. to speak chinese yep mm -hmm. i have to say 
us Asians, we are so proud of who we are. <laughs> Where we That's so great. What, a, what a people. Yeah. God bless. <laughs> I mean, exactly. I have two Asian children. I, have two Asian children. <laughs> I can say that. Sorry. That's I mean, because right. you know, it's as you grow up, um, it's all about the elders and your elders and like ancestors. Mm -hmm. And I remember every year, um, I was raised Catholic, but my grandma was Same. Buddhist, and but and they we would do these things each year where you um, on the death day of a grandparent or somebody's. Um, older senior elder that passed you do these ceremonies and you offer them food and you bow and i was just like i don't get what this is but i grew up with it and we did it and um we do it till this day we do it for my grandma and i'm just like like, like here grandma have a shot big yeah something yeah, like that has, my sister has um an altar that she has created over the years and she has pictures of like my grandparents and like her late dogs and like people close to us who have passed. And she puts it up for Dios de los Muertos, you know, does um, the marigolds and all their favorite foods. And um, it's very, like, it's very, very sweet what she does. Yeah. Yeah. But you don't yeah. feel the need to, you don't want to do that or just. <sighs> Girl, I got two kids. I'm busy. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm just curious. I'm just curious. Because, yeah. <laughs> you sound like a I sister. know. I don't know how you have time for this, <laughs> honestly. Right? I'm like, I'm surprised you're here. Thank you. I'm choking. I'm choking. Okay. We're back. You know, I, I don't know how many conditions. I'm living in the now. <laughs> Actually, Vicky, in in my last house, so so interestingly enough, my husband and I, after the pandemic, moved back to Colorado for almost two uh -huh. years, and um, it was not for us. It was a little too white, so we moved back to Los Angeles. Um, and and while we were there, um, I I lost my grandfather. I lost a dog that I had had for fourteen years. Um, and I lost my grandmother shortly before that. And um, I actually did have a little altar with all of our. <laughs> um, all of our stuff. It wasn't wasn't quite as formal and as lovely as my sister. My sister is also like the most artistic person you've ever met. She's she's just she's incredible with art. Um, so mine was more you know pictures and like little like it's our patch yeah. kids because that was my grandma's favorite <laughs> oh, <laughs> little bones so for my puppy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, but I always you yeah, know one of my best friends is Hispanic and we always do like I get to again I feel like. <laughs> I sort of, I mean, that's the great thing about being in the U.S., right? I can kind of pick and choose and experience my friend's culture, too. And I have sometimes I ask Rachel, I'm like, am I the white girl butting in? Like, am I, you know, not appropriating, but is this okay? And it's like, no, we should share. We should partake. There's appreciation. So we'll go do yeah. yeah, the fact so. that you're cognizant of that is is huge, right? Like, I think that when people mm -hmm. appropriate, um, I think it's because they... I think they don't understand, but if you understand and you just want to know about different cultures, I think that's beautiful. Right. There's appreciation. And I love that. And yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, you know, I try to think about the whole blending of cultures because I just grew up with it. I didn't have to like think about it. It was just done for me. Um, mm. I had a, I was in a little disagreement with my dad the other day and he had said to me, oh, <laughs> Shocker. it's because I we raised you so white, so American, not white. He said, we raised you so American. And I was like, uh -oh. you did not raise me so American. Are you kidding me? You raised me very Korean. I live in America. I'm just American. That's just how I am. You have a Korean American child. Your children are Korean American. This is who we are. I don't fit in Korea. I, and you know, I don't really fit in America. I'm, I'm my own thing, okay? So mm -hmm. you should not raise me to America. That's gotta be hard. Yeah, that's hard. Right. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's interesting because, you know, when I was younger, I had so much pride and I had like my whole group of like Korean friends. And then I listened to Korean music. I um, watched Korean shows. And then in my 20s and most of my 30s, I lived off on my own and I was in LA and I was living my life and I didn't watch Korean shows. I didn't listen to Korean music. I kind of lost how to speak Korean properly. I was more Konglish. Uh -huh. yeah. mm -hmm. And 
Yeah. Um, I mean, I ate Korean food. I did the Korean holidays always. Um, mm. I just didn't watch Korean pop culture and get into it as much. I was, I kind of got out of it. And then um, now again, I'm like back into it. I'm like, okay, Korean dramas. I mean, I have to say, Vicky drew, drew me back in. Vicky was like, you got to listen to this <laughs> Korean group. You got to listen to it. <laughs> so I'm back into it. But I've always been proud of um my culture and the mixed culture it's not it's not like korean it's not american it's a complete blend and yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. and i love that yeah. you know vicky has the blend and you know you have a completely different layer because you have the mix but you're also mixed yourself so and then this is like the top of the <laughs> it's on the top, top of that pyramid. Yeah. Yeah. Top of that pyramid. <laughs> yeah. Well, Vicky, have you done, always... Stacey? Go ahead. Go ahead. Sorry. Go ahead. I was gonna say, have you done the um, like the twenty three and Me or any of the like the the, no, I the testing? My uncle, my uncle recently did it. Um, but I mean, I we're pretty. I mean, we pretty much know. You know what I mean? It, it yeah. Comes back I didn't do it either, but I I have a thing about not wanting to be in the database. But that's a whole other story. <laughs> I did do the yeah. um I did the ancestry thing though, the ancestry.com where you go and you can trace your ancestors back. I did do oh, that. No, I would actually because, love to do that. Yeah, no, I mean we're pretty yeah. we're pretty clear. Like we know um what part of the Apache Nation we're from. Um, mm -hmm. you know, my mom's mm -hmm. side, my my grandmother and grandpa, I want to say Oaxaca, but don't quote me on that. Um mm -hmm. and then and my 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 dad's parents just like Irish and German, like Irish, German, boom. So, um, so we're pretty, yeah, I, I've just never, I mean, and I, I feel a little bit like Rachel, like here I am, you know what I mean? This is what I am. And like, I'm happy yeah. to, you know, like I'm happy to wear a little shamrock on St. Patrick's day. Cause I am Irish. Right. Um, and, um, but at the end of the day, I, I do feel a bit more connected with my Mexican mm -hmm. roots, I think, because I spent mm -hmm. so much time with my mom's family and my dad's yeah. family, um, as lovely as they are, they were a bit more disconnected, right? They were a bit mm -hmm. more mm -hmm. um, loving, like, don't, you know, please, I, I don't want it to misspeak, but you don't want to get um, letters. Yeah. <laughs> um, but, um, but you know my I mean the Mexican culture is um, you know like you're all in if I mean family mm -hmm. is family and you are mm -hmm. all in and uh, mm -hmm. you know our, one of our biggest mi jokes about my, yeah mi familia mm -hmm. uh, one of my mm -hmm. biggest jokes about my grandma is you could come to her house and you could stay let's say you stayed one night and she would say you're leaving already why are you leaving? You, you just got here. Or you could stay a month and she would say, you're leaving already? You just got here. You yeah. need to stay longer. You know what I mean? Nobody was ever eating. Oh, yeah. Cooking. It was, it, was all, you know, mm -hmm. it, it was always this love, right? There was this, this like yeah. really rich cultural love. <clears throat> yeah, I had, I had an aunt from Guadalajara. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And she was, Mija, when you get married, I'll make your dress. I'm like, Okay, and like, we'll go to Mexico. We'll get the friend. I was like, let's I mean, go. Of course, you're still waiting. What, but whatever. That's <laughs> that's basically what we wanted to get across. Like, yes, there's a lot of um, hardships and negativity, and um, yes, racism mm -hmm. and stuff and ignorance. But mm -hmm. there's so much good in having there's a good stuff. that mix and culture and there's so much good to it and so much to celebrate. I would I would point, prefer right? being mixed to anything, honestly, to being mm -hmm. just Mexican or just Irish, you know. And right. I I love that my kids can literally check every race box. Like I love that. And you know, if you think about it, if if evolution is correct, we're all from Africa, right? So they can eat like black check, you know, mm -hmm. I don't mean to appropriate, but um, like my kids, every other box, they check it, right. you know, and mm -hmm. it's, it's very cool. And, and I think, I mean, you know, like we were talking about in the beginning, I think that's just how America is turning out. You know, I think mm -hmm. that more and more kids are just going to be the future. They're just going to be Americans. Yep. 
Yeah. If the world survives, this is going to be eventually we will all be one race. If there's because water. It's such a global, I mean, it will. Yeah, exactly. Like, you know, not obviously not in our lifetime, but you know, right. let me put on my sci-fi yeah. geek hat. Like this is what the, the scientists predict is that because of the way the world is now, we're intermingling and like, we will eventually all be sort of one, one race. Yeah. One race, which is if we survive. Awesome, if we... awesome, but not awesome. Yeah. <laughs> because so, it's awesome. Sorry, ladies. But, yeah. We're going to have to end the show here today <laughs> um, oh, with being one race. But, you know, for everyone watching and listening, uh, I'm going to have Ranji put up her stories on Instagram yes. and we'll make some reels so that she can tell her stories. And there's no after show today. But remember, every Tuesday we have a new episode. And next week, we have a special episode. We're going to do another Am I the Asshole episode. There's not going to be an after show next week. It's just going to be all of us doing Am I the Asshole. So Love join it. us next week. Watch if you like the show today. I know it's a little chaotic. Thank I you, hope it was fun. Thank um, you guys so much for so having me. Thank you so much for being here. It's such a joy. Thank you. Yes, come back again. I promise we're not always this chaos. <laughs> oh, <girl. laughs> we are live. I love it. <laughs>